Hi, my name is Imran Huck, and welcome to another episode of The Voice of a Leader. The series where I interview high achieving leaders, try and find out how they got to where they are. Becoming an elite football player and maintaining a long, successful career can be a huge challenge. Another challenge which many football, footballers uh, face is transitioning from the football environment to a business environment. This week, I caught up with Simon Madden, who is a former champion football player for the Essendon Football Club and currently is a director for Essendon Football Club and runs his own company, which he founded called Winning. Simon, welcome to The Voice of a Leader, the best interview show in the world. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. Very good. I'll be the judge after this, okay? <laughs> Excellent. My first question is very serious. Yes, I'll look serious. How, how did you get so tall? Tell me, please. I need, I need to know. Um, no, you can't because you've got to pay for that. That's, that's, a, that's a secret ingredient. No, no. Uh, a dad who was 6'3 and a mum who was 5'11. So it's just, it's just genes, mate. Right? I, I, no no, I didn't want to hear right. that response. <laughs> just genes. Is your brother Justin... He's only 6'10", he's a little black. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess I have no hope. No, you have no hope. Sorry, mate, you have no hope. <laughs> Next question. So, you played uh, 378 games and kicked more than 500 goals for the Essendon Football Club, which I think is personally the best football club out there. Yeah, totally, totally agree, but I'm biased. Oh, uh, I was going to say, I'm, I'm probably biased as well because I, I passionately support the team. So, having played 378 games, you did hold a record for the most games for the club. And then the tall, uh, lanky fella called Dustin Fletcher came along and he played 400 games, yes. which is remarkable in itself. I'm sure you would have had a lot of ups and downs during your career. Can you tell me about one particular like, low point and oh, how did you overcome it? Yeah, that, it's really interesting because people, the people, it's, you talk about a footy career, people talk about the highs, which are great, they talk about the highs. but. For every one of them, there's a low, and, and one of my, you know, one of my viewpoints is that if you don't understand the struggle, you never understand the success. And I went through the stage where I'd been captain, I'd been sacked as captain, uh, and you know, you say dropped as captain, sacked as captain. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was. And I was uh, play, I'd been, I played over 150 games, I think 140 games. Um, you won two best and first at that stage, and they ended up sitting on the bench for the seconds when they had the seconds, not just the VFL, yeah, it was the seconds, and. Really interesting, most careers sort of go one way from there and they're out. And so that was probably a low point. And I thought, well, at the end of the season, I thought, well, there's a whole lot of people who, or certain people have a different viewpoint of my ability than what I have. So what am I going to do about it? I could, I could moan and complain mm. and blame them. Or I said, well, what am I going to do about it? And I remember saying, which was a, bit, was a bit game at the time, but I remember saying to myself, well, I'm going to win the best and fairest next year. It's a big statement. Yeah, I've already done two, and you can get injured. <laughs> sure. But I, in other words, I was going to do all the things to make mis, my, myself the best player to win the best and fairest. I won the best and fairest the next year and the year after. And, and I don't say that from a pat on the back viewpoint, but I say that from a viewpoint that was a real moment where I, I uh, understood how you can control your own destiny, regardless of what happens to you. It's not what happens, it's how you react to it. Yep. And so my reaction was I could have been like other blokes and given up. Or I could have said, well, hang on, uh, now I'm going to do something about it. And, and I did. So that was a very, very, very important lesson for me, uh, which is very transferable to business too, on how you can control your own destin destiny. And um, I work with, uh, I've worked with some young entrepreneurs about that, on how they, how they set up their own company to, uh, to, to control their own destiny. Did you have a lot of mentors along the way? Oh, different people along the way. My, my father died when I was 13. Um, and so then I was playing league footy at 16. It's very unusual. Very young age. Very yeah. unusual the way the world works. So I think all my coaches were seen as father figures to me. So they were always very, you always look towards them. A um, couple of older players along the way, ex-players were good. Um, my mother who was passed away a number of years ago, she was, uh, she had, knew not, didn't know one end of the football from the other. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, was really, really, really supportive. So, you know, I think there's a mixture of people. I don't think you can always say it's just one, but there's, a, there's a, a mixture of people who help along the way. And I, and I think it's very good for people to have a, a mentor mm. uh, uh, in, in all, all stages of, uh, of your life uh, in a whole lot of areas. But uh, yeah, it's important to have them. Very good. So as I mentioned before, you have a brother, Justin, who's taller than you, unbelievable. So he also played for Essendon and then 
then he left. Never, I have, I've never spoken to him since. I don't blame you. No, I was going to no. say, I was actually going to add on to that <laughs> and say he did something crazy and something you should never do and he left Essendon. So I've got a question which I consider is a rhetorical question. Yes. Between you and him, who's the better player? Well, that's a rhetorical question, isn't it? No, it's, um, well, he only, like in my center, he only played 332 games. He didn't play that many. That's true. That's not many. And he's, <laughs> and he's only got one best and fairest, and he's only got, well, he's got two premierships, so I so. No, I mean, we, he has a very self-effacing humour, which is very good, but um, uh, very, people forget, like, well, I played against him. He was 6 for 10 and 125 Crazy. kilos at one stage. 100, oh, 125 oh kilos at one stage. I was, I was about 99. So he's a very big man, and he did very, very well. And... Uh, uh, and he, as he, 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 I suppose one of the things is he saw. I started as a six, you know started out as a sixteen year old, mm. and then he he saw me go through the start of my footy career, and he understood. So I went, you know, all starry eyed, where he actually saw the, the actual process of how hard it is. And a lot of people, a lot of people forget that it is actually hard. You know, I mean, it, it's it's enjoyable, successful, but it's very very hard. And, and as I said, you have these ups and downs. So he, he, he was very uh, much more pragmatic about football when he mm. moved, went into it. Still loved it, still did very well at it, but he's very, very more, you know, much more realistic and pragmatic about it. So he saw an opportunity to go to Carlton um, and uh, it worked out well for both of us. No, good. I, I think there was a point in your career, this highlights how passionate you are about the club, <laughs> where I think you had an offer, a very lucrative offer, to go to Sydney, was To it? go to Sydney, to, to Sydney Suns. I would, have been the high, I would have been the highest paid player in league footy at that stage. If you extrapolated it now, it'd be something like, you know, the offers you hear for, for like Ablett Franklin. and Franklin. Yeah, and those, sure. those type of offers, and it's all relative, it's all relative back then, but um, yeah, back then it was different because there's one amount of money you had offered and yeah, one yeah. amount of money you got, and they weren't necessarily the same. Mm. Now they are. Yeah. So there's a whole lot of issues there, but... Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of things you have to take into account, and uh, I didn't go, and I'm, you know, it's glad to. See, yeah, that's standard line to hear from people. It's um, glad to glad to hear. You know, you're glad to think that you're, a, you know, well, you are a, a one-team player. It's good to be involved in it. I was going to say, what's one of the reasons you decided? I'm very happy you stayed, by the way. No, no, no. no I, I, well, I, I just, the, you know, the cost of there's always the relocation cost in a whole lot of ways. You think about. It. I mean, it would have. I mean, and it was very good negotiation mm. for how to go back to Essendon yeah. and talk about, you know, do you want to keep me? And so it was, um, so you got a, uh, uh, the cost of relocation, I just had a new family, just got a new house, sure. et cetera. So, so you, um, uh, you, you take all those things into consideration and, and then they made me a good offer, so it all even itself out and I stayed. So. You're a good man. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll move into your business side yeah. of your life now. So after you finish your AFL career, you successfully transitioned into the business world. Yes. And you... So you're currently the director of a company. You actually started up. The uh, company called well, Winning. Winning, very good. I love that name. <laughs> well, well, it was available. Funnily enough, it was available, and and I use that because we have a very simplistic. Well, from sport, we have a winning and losing. You either mm. win if you don't. If you don't win, you lose. How about the draw? But the draw. Oh, the draw. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah. every now and then a win, as I say, win-win situation or lose-lose situation. Mm. But what for me it was a real case of um, understanding the whole concept of winning. If you if you're the third most successful person in your industry are you a loser no you, of course you're a winner and we use winning in a very simplistic view but you know the whole idea of winning friends or winning business or winning a situation so that concept i thought it's very you know sport sport hmm. connected from my background but that concept of what are the things you do to have a winning lifestyle a, w a winning view on life uh, a winning attitude to business and so uh it's a nice all the name is available and yeah. it's still there. Because your motto is improve. Improve your people. Well, I, very simply, improve your people, improve your business. And I come, uh, I, I'm a business consultant um, and with, with um, organisations about how to understand to get the most out of their people. And it's the whole lot of research and the whole lot of area shows that uh, with a lot of businesses, the most underutilised resource is their people. And, and, and people talk about soft skills, but the, you know, the fact that you can you measure a spreadsheet, you can me measure profit. Mm. How are we measuring our people on, yeah. on their, you know, so the engagement factor to it? And there's, again, a whole lot of research that shows that if you engage your workforce from a small, medium to large business in the organisation and get them to be part of that, to, and you, know, you, align, you align the goals and aspirations of the individual, with the goals and aspirations of the organisation, you get a better worker, and funny about that, you get more productivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And funny about that, you make more profit. Excellent. No, good. So, and that's the, that's the basis of the work. And so I've worked with a whole lot of organisations, small, medium, large, 
in a whole lot of areas about improving their people. Excellent. From the leadership, yeah. leadership through the sales team, through uh, middle management, uh, individual coaching can be part of that as well. So it's, it's good, it's very enjoyable. Excellent. I, I like, very simple, I like seeing people improve. I think it's the, the parent in me, the ex-footballer, mm. um, the, the ex-school teacher, all those things to see people improve. And if you can do a job you like, well, Good. You know, it's a good, good place to be. Because you still connect your director at Essendon. I'm a director at Essendon, so just very easy job at the moment. Yeah. No pressure at all. <laughs> Nothing so at all. So look, it's, uh, <laughs> and I knew, look, and again, that was part of it. With, uh, um, you know, everybody knows, well, if, if they're not following sport, but they had probably heard about the, the su- supplement saga. What are you I, talking about? <laughs> I was, yeah. um, I, you know, I came in after that, but it, it's, as I've explained to people before, the easiest thing in the world is to... The easiest thing in the world is to stand, sit in the outer or stand in the outer and point and say, that's terrible, fix that's, it. That's right. I had an opportunity to get on and hopefully um, give some perspective for the club from a historical point of view and, and, and um, from a whole lot of levels because we've been involved in football for that long, that you put that together to, to help get, through, get us through the hard times so we can come out the other end and, and be a great and powerful club again in the not-too-distant future, hopefully. Excellent. Uh, I guess you've got to take baby steps and then slowly... Well, everybody, want, you know, and I won't, I won't try and give you any, any much more knowledge in it because it'll take forever. But most, most people's viewpoint of the situation is uninformed. And, and that's fair enough because most people don't, A, haven't got the time and B, don't want to use the time to go through pages and pages of information sure. to have a look at what the basis of it is. But uh, suffice to say that I think most football people are tired of it and want yeah, to move yeah, on. Fair but, enough. You know, it's, it's part of the footy club that we have to deal with. And, Hopefully, we can deal with it in the best way possible. Good. Did you have a lot of challenges when you transitioned from the football career to the business environment? Yeah, look, it's a very good question. Yes, you do. I think, uh, and it's a, even a basic one. So, uh, I was, uh, you know, I've outlasted a lot more people in football. So, I'm 34 and I retire. So, that's a term you use for old people. Yeah. <laughs> so, here you are in the prime of your life at, um, at, at 34 and going, well, oh, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. What, and what does that mean? So, and back then I was a teacher, and back then a lot of people don't realise that football back then was part time, and it be, over my career became more and more full time until yep. it finally became full time. So I went back to teaching for a little while, but it, I just thought, no, this is not what I want to do. And a couple of people had said to me, well, oh, we, we you know, talked to different people about starting some type of business. Anyway, along the way, a fellow said to me, oh, Simon, you should do this. I went, what do you mean? He said, because of this, this, and this, you should do this, be mm. in this industry, which is uh, coaching and. Uh, motivational industry and I went oh okay so then you sit down and go yeah it's yeah that's interesting so you come up with an like say nebulous idea so you have it you know and pe- you talk to people who start a business you've got a sort of conceptual thing about this big and it's all fluffy and cloudy and, not mm. sure, and you start to shape it into a thing that says oh this, this is what I want to do yeah. and uh, and that so you actually go through the, you, you go through this development phase of your business and you talk to you know a whole lot of people from different areas you, you, there's a there's a well there's an establishment phase first. You say, well, this is, I, this is what I want to do. And then there's a development phase as you, as you, you fine tune it. And then there's a growth phase. Yep. Now that can be over a couple of years or three years, but there is this natural progression that you have to work on. And it's, it's like anything else. A business is organic, you know. I know bigger business can grow because they take over other businesses, but there is this organic, organic growth you know, phase. Do you want to be small? Do you want to be medium? Is there enough work out there? Do we need to take people on, etc. All those things. So, and I went through, you know, went through that stage. So now I've been doing that for about eight years. So I've I've sort of got to a stage now. I'm sort of um, redefining what I want to do over the next two years um, for a whole lot of reasons which I haven't got time for. But um, <laughs> sure. you know, basically, I'm getting old. And I don't yeah. <laughs> no, you know, yeah. I, you're looking at okay. So I've been in this eight years. What does that mean? How's the world change? How's the industry change? What do I need have, you have to do? And that's a really, really important part for anybody in sport and in life and in business is um, uh, reviewing. You can look at, you can have great goals, mm. but what have you learned from the past? And a lot of people are very, very good on f- looking at what they did wrong. But and again, I talk to people in business. Well, what have you done right? Why are you, why are you where you are? What are the things you've done right? So, can can you identify them? Can you encapsulate them? Can you grow them? Yes, let's look at the things where. You haven't improved, but the old stop, start, keep, change concept has been around for ages. You regularly got to do that. In, 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 you know, again, football is an analogy, but in, in, in football, the first thing on Monday, you review what you did last yeah. weekend. And you look at what you did right, what you did wrong, mm. what you can improve. 
first thing on Monday morning. In business, first thing on Monday morning, we get up and go straight into business. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of people say, oh, we have our annual review. I said, no, if the way the world's changing, if you're just reviewing annually, then you're getting left behind. You've got to have a regular process that is, is very business-like um, and not emotional that you're looking and go, hey, hey, what are we doing right? Great. What do we need to improve? What, what do we need to stop? What do we need to change? And that's just an ongoing process. And as long as you understand that, then the concept of let's analysing, you know, the old performance review that people talk about, oh, a performance yeah. review, because I don't want to sack me, no. A performance review is also also reviewing what you're doing well. Yep, that's not, true. Not just what we need to improve or what you need to stop. But a lot of people see that as a negative, where it should be an ongoing thing about constant, if you, if you, if you, if you, want, if you want continual high performance, then there's a continual, there's a continual analysis of how we're doing it and are we doing it right or are we doing it the best and that's just part of what it should what it should be oh very good points there you go just going on from that actually. I'm not just a pretty face <laughs> sorry I'm not a pretty face hang on so just going on from that there'll be a lot of football players out there who are keen to transition again from the football environment to a business environment yeah. are they during their career said so to yourself or oh, Africa what would you What's some points you'd give to them? Very good point. So, someone said to me ages ago, and I wish I... 5% of your time should be, you should be working on what you're going to do next. 5%. But, but I reckon that could be 5 to 10%. In other, in other words, what are you doing? What, are you, what time are you spending in? Or what, there's an amount of time you should be working on what you're going to do next. And, that, and you think about that, you know, that's called superannuation for people. Yeah, for yeah. Like, that, that's long term. But even in that, within, in footballers, and if, yeah, well, any professional sports person, there has to be time where they're not doing their sport, either physically or mentally, mm. that they break away. And I think it's very good for their sport that they have time away from it. But in that time, what are they? Are they doing the business course? Are they doing um, uh, the development course if they want to become a you know, property developer? Yep. Are they uh, are they doing a course in whatever they're interested in? And it, and you just do a little bit. You do a couple of subjects or a couple of areas so that you've got when you finish you have something to move into. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't know what I want to do. Well then, and, and more sports clubs are starting to look at this, is okay, what, how can we help you do that along the way? So let's almost have an internship or a work experience type mm. thing where go and work with one of the sponsors or go and experience one of the sponsors' jobs and see if you like it or not. And if you don't like that one, let's try another one. And so you do, you do a few, so you start to get an idea and I, I think it's really, really interesting with young people because um, in my time, young people, if they said it, you know, 20, I don't know, I don't know what I want to do, people mm. go, oh, well, you've got to find something. I think that's a very relatively good answer to a question now. You, people aren't being forced into, I have to do this. Yep. You know, I, I keep saying, go and get a job, you know, get a job yeah, and, yeah. and get money, but be looking at, is this the thing that suits you? And a lot of people start something and realise that it doesn't suit them, and that's fine. And then over time, they start to develop a concept of what they really want to do. So they might have different careers until they settle on that. And most people now, I mean, most people have five, six, seven, eight careers, not jobs, over their lifetime. And you're going to live, you're going to live a lot longer than I will. I mean, both in because you're young, but because yeah. your lifespan will be longer. So you'll find that you'll do different things along the way, and that's okay. So that concept of discovery, and discovery is a, a term that should be used in a whole lot of areas about discovering, you know, self-discovery. Mm. And I, when I work with when I work with clients, there's a discovery phase. We work look at we, you know what you say is a problem, what is the real problem, do that they align, or what the issue is, or what the what the positive is you want to work on. And I find I see a lot of young people they going they go through a discovery phase from about 18 to 25 to 26, and they do a course and and there's lots of stories of people doing a course, doing the job and going actually I don't like this. Yeah, that's true. And making a career change early, and I don't see anything wrong with that because. You know, it, whatever you do is takes up a lot, you know, get good sleep because it takes up a third yeah, of your life yeah, yeah. and find a job you really like because it takes up a third of your life, you know, so there's, there's two thirds. Get a good bed, get a good job, okay? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well, Simon, thanks again for your time. You've actually got like, I feel like I've got like a mentoring session. <laughs> well, that's going to say you, the, 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 the invoice will be in the mail, all right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's the other thing for business, invoice, 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 invoice. cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. That's a very basic one. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No, look, thanks again uh, for taking some time out of your day to no come on my show. Do you think it's the best interview show in the world? Do I have your approval? Um, this side's really good, but I want to see the edited version. Oh, okay, well. why not? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> no, nice to meet you again. Good man. And uh, best of luck. Same to you. Good man. Excellent. Thank you for watching another episode of The Voice of a Leader. Very, very intriguing episode. I'm sure you can take away a lot from what Simon said. Uh, as I mentioned, it was like a mentoring so session to me. 
One point that really captured my attention is companies don't place enough focus on the people. There's a lot of companies out there that when the budget is tight, they remove the people. Whereas Simon mentioned, it should be a focus to invest more time in them. Once again, thank you for watching this episode. Remember, if you or someone you know is a high achieving leader and would like to have an interview with me, please visit my website, answer three questions and send an email to the voice of a leader at gmail.com. Also, please like my YouTube channel and my Facebook page so you're kept up to date with the series. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Mm-hmm.